friends, this is Scott with Modern Living Off Grid, and today I'd like to talk to you about how we winterize our travel trailer. It's early October in Minnesota, and last night it got down into the mid-30s, so it's that time of the year. The equipment that we use to winterize our travel trailer consists of six gallons of RV antifreeze, an air compressor and attachments to blow out the lines, a blowout fitting so that we can attach this to the trailer so we can get the compressed air into our lines, and then a tank and hose so we can drain our black water tanks. Hit our off, here at our off-grid farm site, we don't have a septic system, so we have to drain all of our waste into a tank, which we run down to a local county park and use their dump facility to dump it. I've been using this same technique for about 30 years and I've never had an RV freeze up on me. Your experiences or your trailer might be slightly different but for the most part this process is pretty identical amongst all the trailers. The way I typically do it is I will usually start at the front of my travel trailer and work my way back. The reason I do that is I don't want to take a chance on missing anything. The first thing I have to do is I have to access my storage compartment. This is where my bypass valve is where I can bypass the fresh water tank and take the liquid directly from the RV antifreeze and pump it into my trailer. On this particular trailer, there's simply a hose, and the camera won't be able to show you the valve, but back here there's a valve that I turn to switch from my fresh water tank to the bypass valve. So what will happen now is we'll simply stick this into the gallon containers of antifreeze and the water pump will pump it through the system. The next thing I do is I'm just gonna open up my outdoor shower and pull it out just as a reminder to me that I need to service this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my city water connection and I'm going to go ahead and take my blowout plug and I'm going to screw this in. This is where my air compressor will hook up to the trailer blowing in the compressed air to help blow the water out of the line. You just need to get that finger tight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain my fresh water tank. Because this is fresh water, I have no problem letting it fall onto the ground. And this particular trailer, it's underneath here. And I will just let that drain onto the ground. Again, this is fresh water, so there's no harm to our farm site. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the two low points. I've got a low point for the hot water line and the cold water line. And again, it's underneath the trailer. And in my particular trailer, they're right here. It's basically the same thing. You basically just unscrew. And again, there's two of them. One for the fresh. I'm sorry, one for the hot and one for the cold. The next thing I'm going to do, and a lot of people forget about this step, but this trailer has a black water flush. There's water in this line, so I need to flush this out. I'm just gonna open this up as a reminder to me that I need to do something with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain my fresh or my hot water heater. On my particular hot water heater, I've got a sacrificial anoid that I need to remove. Now I don't have the exact tool, so I'm gonna kinda of cheat here. So I'm just gonna use a vice grip Grip onto that real good, and then with a the screwdriver, I'm simply going to turn it. And as you can see, it comes out fairly easy. Now, ideally, you'd want to use a socket or something like that, but I'm quite a waste of a store, so I'm just going to use this. And water is going to come out, so you want to kind of stand back. That's a good time for me to inspect my anode. As you can see, there's been quite a bit of corrosion on this thing. What I'll probably do is clean it up and again use it next year because the rod itself is in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to set this aside and continue to let the water heater drain. The final thing I need to do on the outside is I need to hook up my black water tank. And for that, I'm going to put on a pair of rubber gloves since this is black water I'm going to be dealing with. And I'm going to start draining both my black and my gray water tanks. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of water coming out of the tank now. And that's a, I believe that's a 10 gallon tank, so it'll drain for a few minutes. 
And again, if you're not familiar with what this guy is, this is a portable dump station. Basically allows us, we have two of these, it basically allows us to dump the content of our holding tanks into these portable tanks, allowing it, us to bring it to a local county park that has a dump station so we can sanitarily dump our contents of our holding tank. And again, I'm just gonna remove the cap, hook up my hose. Open up the two things here. And I'm gonna go for, first of all, I'm gonna drain my black. I've now moved the table a little bit closer so I can get my air compressor hooked up to the blowout valve and get my antifreeze a little bit closer to where we're gonna pump it in. Now the air compressor I use, we picked this thing up at Walmart, I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks. Pretty inexpensive little air compressor. And it's actually a nice compressor we've used for blowing up our tires but the main purpose for this compressor is to blow out our lines. We need to move a fair amount of volume of air to get the water to flow out. And we we're gonna be blowing out of the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink and the toilet, etc. So I need an air compressor that has a little bit of a tank. I set this at about 35 to 40 PSI. I don't wanna go much over that because I don't wanna take a chance in damaging my lines. And basically what I do on this particular compressor, I just basically take the hose, I plug it in, in our particular case, we just use this guy because it just makes it easy. I plug this into here. And what my wife is going to do when I go inside, she's basically just going to take this guy, hold it up to here, and this particular unit, she's going to squeeze. And what that's going to do, it's going to pressurize our water system, similar to the way the water pump does, but instead of pumping water, it's going to pump air. And what's going to happen, it's going to blow all the water, I shouldn't say all the water, it's going to blow the majority of the water out of the lines into the holding tank which will be eventually dumped into our portable dump station. Once that's done, any remaining water in the system will use the RV antifreeze to flush it out and ensure that we don't have a freeze up. A freeze up on a trailer like this could be very expensive. New, this is about a $35,000 trailer. I've got about $18 worth of antifreeze here. So it's definitely a cheap insurance to make sure we don't freeze up. Especially in Minnesota where our temperatures can easily get down to 25 or 30 degrees below zero. You want a good quality um, RV antifreeze. Okay, I'm now inside the trailer. And prior to coming into the trailer, I didn't show this on the video, but I did put the two low point drains for both the hot and the cold back on as I need to be able to pressurize the system. So basically the final thing I need to do is I need to turn my, wa my hot water bypass valve on. And I've already moved the access panel. My particular trailer, it's right back here. And this might be a little bit hard to see here, but there's a little valve right back there. I'm not sure the camera can pick it up. But I need to turn that into bypass mode, which I've okay, done. Okay, we are now applying compressed air into the lines. I'm going to go in here to the bathroom. I'm not sure if you can hear, but you can kind of hear some of the air blowing through the lines. And one thing I never do is I always make sure that one, um, either the hot or the cold, is always on an appliance before I turn the other one. It looks like there's no, no more water coming out. So I'm going to go to the shower. I'm going to go ahead and open up the hot. I'm going to go ahead and close off the other one. And there you can kind of see some of the water being blown out. Now this is being blown out by the compressed air that's coming in from the air compressor on the outside. I'm just going to go ahead and get this down to make sure we get all the water out. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the cold and then I'm going to close the hot and now we're going to be blowing out the cold. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the toilet. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close off the shower and then you can see the water being blown out. I'm going to keep that open. I'm going to open up the bathroom cold again. And you can see a few little trickles of water coming out. I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to open up the hot. And I'm going to close the cold. And you can see a little water still blowing out. And I'm going to go ahead and keep that one open. And I'm going to come into the kitchen here. 
and I'm going to open up the cold. And now I'm going to go ahead and close off the other one. And again, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to take a chance in overpressurizing my lines. That air compressor can produce a lot more uh, pressure than um, the water pump can. So I don't want to take a chance in overpressurizing anything. I'm going to flip over to the hot. Nothing's coming out there. I'm just going to kind of go back and maybe open up. The, you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth. Excuse me, bump the camera. I'm kind of going back and forth. And again, you can see a little water trickling out. Open up the cold. And basically, I'll continue repeating this process until no water comes out. I'll check back with you guys in a couple of minutes here. Turn my water pump on. Now what's happening on the outside of the trailer, we're actually taking the fluid or the RV antifreeze and pumping it into the system. Now it's going to take a few seconds for the system to pressurize, so I'm just going to wait for that to happen. Just waiting for the pump to turn off. So again, what's going to happen now is we're going to pump that RV antifreeze throughout the entire system. That stuff is good to about 50 degrees below zero. Okay, my water pump just turned off, so I'm going to start in the kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the kitchen sink. I'm going to let it go until I start seeing the pink RV antifreeze. There it is. So I'm going to switch over to the hot. And there we go. We got a pretty good flow. I'm going to do this for each one of the fixtures in the trailer. So I'm going to come into the bathroom here. There I got the pink stuff. And I'm going to let a fair amount run because I want to get into the trap, the uh, gray water trap. Make sure there's no water in there. I'm also going to do the same to the shower. And I'm going to turn that one off. And I'm going to turn... Oh. And again with the toilet. And I'll basically repeat this process until I've pumped in all six gallons. Now some people might think that six gallons may be excessive, but again, I want to make sure I get enough water through the entire system, down into the traps, and into the holding tanks to make sure I get all the water out. A freeze up on a trailer is extremely expensive. I'll be back with you guys in a couple of minutes here. We're pretty much wrapping up now. I pumped all six gallons of the RV antifreeze through all the different fixtures within the camper. You might be thinking, Scott, do you really need six gallons? No, I don't. I could get by with less. But over the years, I've always used six gallons and I've never frozen up an RV. What I want to make sure is that I get all the lines, all the traps below the sink, the shower. I want to make sure all those traps have all the water out and that I've run enough RV antifreeze through my holding tanks. So if there's any water or anything left in those tanks, it's hopefully flushing out the water or at least, at least mixing with it to prevent any freeze ups. The final thing I always do is I'll go to my hot and cold low uh, points and I'll go ahead and open those up and let the RV antifreeze drain out. There's really no benefit to keeping the RV antifreeze in the lines. The stuff doesn't expand is basically what this stuff does. It can freeze, it'll get kind of slushy. It won't expand, which is why it doesn't damage anything. But I really don't need to leave it in there all winter. So let's go ahead and let it drain out. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and close off my black water, my gray water tanks. I'll run the black tank down to the county park where I'll go ahead and dump it in the dump station. If you guys have any comments on how you guys winter winterize your trailer, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.